Hi, everyone. Sorry, that didn't quite work like I thought it was going to. <laughs> All right, let me know if you can hear me for one. I am testing out a microphone, so I need to know if you can hear me. And just let me know in the comments. Hello, hello everyone. Wilma, Kelly, thank you. Can you hear me? Just need to know if you can hear me okay. You hear me? Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jody. That comment delay kind of kills me a little bit. Do I sound okay? Is it loud enough? Okay, great, Deb. Thank you. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah, just got just got some microphones. There's a little guy attached. Can't see him now. <laughs> Hopefully it stays connected to my shirt. That's where I put it for now. So giving that a test. I also tested out that countdown feature. Yeah, still still trying to get used to everything. And my camera is over here and my comments are over there. So I'm gonna try and talk to you guys that way. Joan. Yes, good to start. Great. Thank you guys for joining me. I know very last minute live that I planned. Kind of playing with some settings, trying to get some things ready. And just, you know, just got to jump in and do it. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I gave a 15 minute warning or maybe a half hour warning. So I just needed to jump in and super unpredictable in my house because like yesterday I had to leave at 1230 to go get my son so it's just kind of it is what it is you can hear me but not as loud as you would like okay let me see you can hear me just fine well maybe I'll move my microphone I mean it's not the most expensive microphone so one second okay I put that up. You don't want to see any of that. Put that up closer to my mouth. So we'll try this and see how this works. You can hear me just fine. Thank you guys. Gloria, hello. Mike needs to be closer. Okay. So I did move it, I think, after that comment. So let me know if that's any better. Maybe I need to move it closer. You know, fine tuning. Attach it. Okay, now it's really close. So let me know how this is now that I moved it super close. See how that goes. Helps if I scrolled so I could see your comments too. <laughs> all right. Turned all the way up. Now, Wilma, okay, so I'm catching this comment afterwards. Is this better that I have it close to my mouth? I have it kind of closer here. Is that any better? Can you hear it any better? You're getting feedback. What kind of feedback? Wilma, what kind, what was it doing? Thumbs up. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Gloria. All right. Well, while you guys are settling in, does sound louder since I moved it. Great. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to move down to my desktop and we'll take a look at what I'm doing today. Keep leaving those comments. I'm going to try and peek up and catch them as much as I can. So we're going to move over to my desktop and look at this. Hi, Simon. Thanks for joining. So I'm playing with some of the new colors from Concord and Knight. Um, I did a swatch thing here and, you know, to me, swatches are are easy to create, but now I have to utilize that swatch. Thanks, Simon. I appreciate that. Hi, Sharon. And, and I struggle with using color swatches or just, you know, color in general when it comes to on my card. So that is what I want to do today is I have a color swatch, but now I want to put it to use. I was just reading your comment real quick here, Julie, thanking me for the recent lawn fawn posting with the balloons and elephants. You recreated it for your daughter's whoop comment. <laughs> daughter's first birthday card. That is wonderful. Great to hear that. Seems to be your computer. Okay. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate this. So 
still test running through uh, lots of live things. So I'll try and stay on task as much as possible. <laughs> All right. So new colors. Um, I don't have like individual products listed in the description at this time, but I do have my affiliate link posted to the Concord and Ninth page to check out the entire release, which is absolutely fabulous. So here is my swatch card I created. I have, uh, actually all of these are new colors. I fell in love with this color palette. So I have dragon fruit, sweet pea, pink lemonade, tide pool, and juniper. And I use tide pool and juniper a lot on my color swatches. So I, I really need to just put this to use. We're going to try it out. And this, I just wanted to show you for one, it looked really pretty on the screen. <laughs> it's just my color swatches. Now, this is how I do all of my color swatches. I use um, a tag dye from Hero Arts, and then I do a little label at the bottom. So this is my particular one. I do actually use these type of swatches a lot because when I'm creating products or creating cards, I'll just kind of grab cardstock off of my shelf. I don't pay attention to the color name. And then when I need to go and do a supply list, I, I grab my color swatch. It's like, okay, well, what color did I just grab? Because I have no idea. So these really are helpful for me. And then my ring that I have on here, I don't know the exact name of it, um, but this is the one that Tim Holtz uses. And I love this ring. My my binder clips always seem to break loose, um, especially with my ink swatches. So I like these because this just twists. It's not going to come unclipped. It is a lot of work, but it's it's worth it. It's definitely saved me a few times. So this is just a metal ring and then you can screw it on. I picked up mine from Simon Says Stamp. So I have a few of these to spare in case I do any more cardstock shopping. All right, so let's start with this color palette. I have a few different color palettes that I'll be showing um, over the next weeks or so, but I wanted to start with this because I thought this was super pretty. And now keep in mind, you can mix and match these two with some of the uh, colors that are already in the release. It just, this is the one I grabbed. And when I, when I labeled my colors, like, oh, they're, they're all brand new colors. But I'm sure if you have something in your stash, you could swap those out for the, you know, for your colors that you have to match these. Let me peek over here at the comments, see if I missed any questions. Can you ask to see Stardust, Lemongrass, and Avocado together? Yes. Um, if I had my swatch, let's do these. I'll pull this out. So coming in loud and clear on your TV. Thank you, Wilma. I'm glad that it's coming out now. Hopefully I'm not too loud now. All right. So uh, let me go back to that. You said stardust, lemongrass, and avocado. So we have, where's my stardust? Okay, there's stardust. Avocado. And you said lemongrass. Where did I put my lemongrass? Oh, there's lemongrass. Okay, try and do this. There is stardust. Flip that. Okay. So if you can see that, and I'm pretty happy with my uh, stream here today. I think these colors look pretty, pretty close to what they are in person. Sometimes you know, with filming and we have to adjust brightnesses and things like that, it can distort colors, but I think we're looking pretty close to this. Stardust, lemongrass, and avocado. There you go, Laura. All right, so that is that color combo, which is really pretty. I can see a lot of greenery being die cut out of that. I think that would be a great mix. Makes you think of afternoon tea in a rose garden. Aw, that is beautiful, Heidi. All right, now I have this swatched out with cardstock, but I'm actually going to be using my inks today. And what I'm going to do is use the, where is it? Mod Turnabout stamp set. If you hadn't seen yet, this is the stamp set that was used to create the swatches that I just hid underneath the bottom. And this one, I love all these names. I think that's super cute. And I used 
Um, this is actually for my swatch book. I can show you later where I swatched out the inks. And this is the die set. I cut my tag out of the white cardstock. And then you have your spacers. And these are the, the this is the piece that you would die cut all of your colored cardstock from. So that was the swatch book stamp and die set. Hi, Barb. Yes, great to see you. I'm trying out this live stuff, trying to get better at it. A little more comfortable. All right, so I'm gonna do the mod turnabout. And I'm gonna use my Misty for this. I had seen uh, Jennifer use the stamp wheel, which is genius. I'm excited to try that, but I haven't yet. So I'm gonna stick to my trusty uh, jig and Misty for right now. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do with your turnabout stamps, is there a stamp? For the old colors yes it has all the ink colors listed on it on that swatch it's got all of them so you have clover sea glass parsley it's got all of the colors on here on that stamp set all right so your turnabout stamps you will get a guide this piece you always want to keep with your stamp sets it's got that x in here it says this side up and you have your center point hi misty Great to see you here. So I've used mine a couple times now. And I'm going to just peel this off. I sound natural. <laughs> well, probably natural because I'm used to talking to myself. It's trying to get used to looking at the comments um, and, and do this at the same time. And typically when I'm talking to myself I'm, I'm not telling myself what to do <laughs> so, slight changes here but trying not to pull on the stamp set itself i learned that from carissa wiley where she tries not to pull the stamp set so you don't risk stretching it and pull on the plastic instead all right and then we are going to take our stamp set and figure out where it's going to line up so it's this direction I apologize if my head, no, that's not it. That one's it. I don't want my head to get in the way here, but I do want it to line up. So I'll get all of my stamp images lined up over that black print. Working on more lives, getting there. Definitely getting there. All right, now I'm going to bring in my Misty. Now that I have my stamp on the guide and i'm going to bring in my concord and ninth turnabout jig so it's kind of one of those sticky mats i'm going to place this down in the corner of my misty and it's got this white x on here i don't really need to hold that down but i will and now i'm going to take the x of the turnabout and line it up with the x on my jig so this might get my head in the way too. I'm just trying to line up that black line with the white one. This is what's gonna make it line up perfectly. So I have that down. So that plastic sheet is pretty much kind of stuck down to the jig for right now. So we can close the door of our Misty to pick up that stamp set and then peel all of this off. So there's my jig, and then we have that plastic piece here that we wanna just carefully peel off. Oh, thank you so much, Deb. I appreciate that. Okay, now we have the set. Now, I kind of like flew past this in my video I put up the other day when I was doing my stamping, but sometimes you transfer ink onto your project, and we all hate that, we know that. One of the things, um, that you can look for is if you have bubbles in here. Now, this is going to be hard to see on camera, but in person, if you look at it, kind of sit back and look at it, you'll be able to see if there's air stuck underneath those big areas of your stamp. So it, now mine actually looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbles on there, but if you do have some bubbles, all you'd want to do is kind of peel that up to release the bubble. Because otherwise those bubbles you think about it are raised up almost to the level of your stamp image and it's going to pick up your ink so you just want to make sure you don't have any air pockets in there okay i think that's pretty good 
so I can start my stamping. I'm going to grab some white cardstock here that I have cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And on our jig, if I can pull that up for you. There are a lot of the grid lines on here for setting things up, but there's also the outlines for an A2 size card front, whether it is a landscape or portrait. I'm going to do portrait. So I'm going to line that up within that kind of grid line area. Thank you, Gloria. I'm glad those help. Sometimes I go too fast in my videos and I, and I know that and I try to slow down. <laughs> it doesn't always work, but I try to slow down for them. All right. Now with my little swatch card I have here, um, I have five colors picked out, but with a turnabout, we only need four. So I need to eliminate one color, unfortunately. What color should I, and I know this is going to be hard, but what color should I not use? I'll let you guys pick. Take one out of this equation. Let me know in the comments which color I should not use because I only need four colors of ink. So just drop me a note. It's going to be hard, I know, because it's a great color combination. So which one should I take out? And while you guys are debating that, I'm going to just peek around on my live to see what I have going on here. <laughs> I see tide pool, take out tide pool. I'm also trying to look on my camera here, like where it tells me how many people are watching. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Okay. 72 of you are here today. Thank you all for joining me. Top one, take out dragon fruit. Okay. That's interesting. Lot, there's usually been a lot of love for dragon fruit. Okay. So take out dragon fruit, you're thinking. Dragon fruit, sweet pea, dragon fruit. Looks like dragon fruit's kind of kind of pulling ahead. Okay. So I will pull out dragon fruit. We'll eliminate dragon fruit for right now. And we'll use the other ones. So I will start with a sweet pea. Now I don't have my labels yet for my ink pads, but I do have the full size ink pads, which I love. And I am definitely one. I've had some people ask, you know, which would you get, full size or ink cubes? And honestly, I like them both. I like my large ink cubes or my my large ink pads for ink blending purposes and stamping large areas. But I like the ink cubes for getting smaller stamp images. It's just easier to stamp it. You don't necessarily have to have it for that. But I also find if you want to mix inks on one stamp, it's easier to do with an ink cube. So I am not really a good person to ask on which to get, an ink cube or a full size. You need to think about what you do as a stamper. Are you an ink blender? Do you stamp more? And I'm an ink blender. So I, I take all the full size I can get. Now these are brand new and super, super juicy. So it's going to look a little funny at first when I stamp it down. Really, really juicy. It, it did make me, did I just use, oh, sweet pea is super dark. I forget about that. It did make me realize when I was swatching out my colors that I need to seriously re-ink my original um, ink line. I have ink all over here. All right, I'm going to clean that up <laughs> because you know I am going to get pink fingerprints everywhere. So I am going to bring out my Gina Kate tidy towel. I'm just going to clean some of this up a little bit. The ink pads are foaming pads, uh, no different than the first. Uh, the first ones that came out, they are a foam ink pad. I like both. I don't have a preference. I like both foam and felt ink pads. So to me, I'm good with whatever. I'm, I'm more of a color person. I think I've seen, I think I've seen a question up here. Let me go back. Good evening from Germany. Well, hello from Germany. Nice to see you. Do I condition my stamps before using them? Yes, absolutely, Allison, I do. I will typically rub my hand over my stamp or I'll do Versamark on it first and clean that off. 
So I do absolutely condition my stamps before stamping. This one I have used a couple times. Um, right now, mainly you're seeing this because my inks are, they're, they're just super, super juicy when you first get them. And if you look, you can see how the colors are settling back a little bit, or not settling back, but they're softening up. So some of the areas have filled in a little bit because it's softening up. So you just want to be careful. I think, gosh, I think Christina shared some tips in her video last night about what you can do because, I mean, it's, it's awesome to have a super juicy ink pad. Um, but on these, it can be a little hard to control. That came out, you know, it's kind of, kind of darker there, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to leave that darker. I'm not going to do all of them. I think I'm going to leave that a little darker. I think that'll be a cool look. Almost kind of two-toned, well, maybe three-toned here. This is why I like ink cubes because I could have just inked up the ones that I wanted. We'll see what happens. It's alive, right? Good evening from Sweden. Wow. That's awesome. All right, so now I'll leave that. We're gonna go with that. We got some super dark pink. So everyone talks about dragon fruit being a pop in the face. And I think, <laughs> I think sweet pea is not far behind. Sweet pea's got some kick. So let's clean this up just a little bit. Wipe off some of that excess pink. And I'll come back and look at the comments here in just a second. Sorry for the squeaky noise. Okay. So let me go back, make sure I didn't miss any comments here. Christina recommended making some coordinating cardstock to, yes, that was it. She had some very good tips in there. Are these foam ink pads like Catherine Pooler or Simon Says Stamp? Yes, both of those are foam ink pads. So yes, they have that uh, kind of, I don't want to say squishy, but it's softer than a uh, felt ink pad. Your black of VersaFine leaves tiny fibers all over your stamped image. Oh, that's a bummer. They all do it, really. I have had a black VersaFine, I think for at least five, six years. I don't think mine has done that. That's interesting. Okay, so I'll go back now and now our jigs have numbers in them. There's one, two, three, and four, and that's going to help you turn to create this pattern. So I'm gonna turn this to the number two spot. And one of the things I really love about turnabouts is that you can stamp it, stamp it at either one, two, three, or four and leave it. You don't have to do the full background. You can just leave it at turn one or two. So that's one thing I really do like about the um Jigs. What color am I going for next? Pink lemonade. That is a nice, nice soft pink. How wet do I keep my tidy towel? Um, I will usually rinse mine off in the sink and then I just wring it like I would my washcloth when I'm washing dishes. I just wring it out so I don't have water dripping from it, but I want it still damp because what will happen, this is pink lemonade, um, what will happen is if you don't have it damp enough, you can't tear your tidy towel. It's, you need it to be wet, not soaking wet where it's dripping, but you do, do need to have it, you know, somewhat wet. So I just kind of wring it out in the sink, like I would my washcloth or a towel. And then I've been keeping mine in these little storage containers. I actually bought those storage containers at Walmart for my son for his lunches and I kept one. <laughs> It's like, you know, I think I have another use for this. So I'm inking this up with my pink lemonade. And I'm stamping this. I think I dropped some ink somewhere on there, but you know, let me move that. That magnet is just getting in my way. So this is going to decide if I lined my stamp up correctly. <laughs> this is usually the test. Let's turn number two. I just have ink everywhere. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, but I do have ink everywhere. 
Okay. I'm going to stamp it. I think I'm going to stamp it one more time. Let's just keep on the, the double stamping thing here, I think. And when I'm stamping, I'm just kind of gently, I'm not pushing down real hard. You don't need a lot of pressure with any foam pads. Just kind of go around, lightly pat it. And then stamping that again. Feel that back. <clears throat> so that is a turn two, and I stamped each of these colors at least twice so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys all here. I had some friends who were like, let me know if you go live. I'll come in. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I won't be sad, you know, if I don't have like a ton of people showing up. It's I get nervous anyway to begin with, and it's nice to start with a small crowd and be able to mess around and figure out what needs to be fixed and all that fun stuff. I'm up to 87, though. So thank you, all 87 of you, for popping in. I appreciate that. They are very pretty colors. Now, I'm going to double check. I have a number three up here. I did turn it. I often forget, especially if I'm talking. I will forget if I turned it. Now this is the tide pool and inking this up. This is going to be a super bright card. Kind of need that though. Matches the sunshine outside. And we will stamp number three. And I'm just pushing down over the areas of the actual image. See how that turned out. That is really good. I think I'm actually going to let that one sit on stamping it once. Woo, comments went flying. Thank you. Is it now? This is where another thing I get nervous is pronouncing names. So if I pronounce your name and I butcher it or you just shake your head at me, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of times why I do not call out names because I get nervous. You know, like obviously Deb, I can't really mess that name up, but some of them I do get nervous and I'd, I'd rather just be like, hi, <laughs> than, than butcher somebody's name. But now that, so this one is, is it Ter Teresa? Was that one? Did I pronounce that correctly? Teresa? All right. And last color here is Juniper. Where is my juniper? There it is. Your first time. Thank you, Nelly. Oh, please don't judge me on today's live. This it's only like my second or third live. <laughs> so I'm working through all the, you know, aches and pains of a live. But thank you for subscribing. I do uh post quite a bit of content. So I hope you enjoy a little bit of everything. Now this is my juniper. So if you joined late uh, or just joining in, I'm working with the new Concord and Ninth colors and the new turnabout stamp that were just released yesterday. And I'm working off of a color swatch book that I created with some colors. Woo, look at juniper, holy buckets. I might have to go back and restamp that tide pool, I think. I don't think it's going to live up to the rest of these colors. Oh, I have company. Let's see who it is. Hmm. Hello, my daughter. I am live. Do you want to come say hi to everybody in my live where I have 91 people watching me? come on over say hi people would love to see you oh she left you at the y all right yeah. <laughs> all right i think i'm gonna go back and stamp restamp juniper here one more time so i just shifted that back the other way to number three so what you guys just kind of heard there was my daughter popped in because they 
I don't know, I had some sort of thing going on off-site today at school, and now she doesn't have school the rest of the day. So I had texted her before I went live, and I'm like, guess what? You're walking home because I'm going live. But it's a beautiful day. It was a great day to be walking home, and we don't live too far from the school, so. All right, I went back to turn three, and I'm going to stamp Tide Pool again. How old is my daughter? She is 17. So we are planning senior pictures, all that fun stuff. Yeah, she she kind of just laughs and smiles when I ask her to to pop on the live. You know, if you would have asked maybe five years ago, she might have done it, but <laughs> she was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Clean that off. Let me go back while I was chatting here. Let me go back and check out your comments. I'm a new zoner. Thank you, Kelly. See, I knew it would be great, but no, she just she just moseyed right past and went on upstairs. And you always tell your German speaking kids that as long as they are friendly and polite, people won't mind. That is wonderful. That is that is good. I'll have to tell her that people were saying hi and she just kind of snuck away on me. <laughs> I said your name right. Great. Couldn't figure out how to get back to the co I know. I do that too. If you're on a phone, especially, are you on a phone? Because when I'm on the phone and I'm trying to type comments, it like takes me to different places, pops me out of conversations. We got to be grateful. They laugh and smile. Yes. Yes. And she is definitely smiling because she's done for the day. <laughs> Which. She'll probably just head down to the gym. She loves to go and work out, lift weights. Oh. You should pop in. They want to see you. No, come here. Did you really just say that? <laughs> I can't edit that out. There's no editing in live. Okay. <laughs> I have two kids. I have my daughter, Allison, who is 17, and I have Dalton, who is 12, and he's autistic, so my he's where my days get, um, <laughs> Barb, I interrupt myself. I just quickly glanced up, and I thought your comment said, do I like my husband? <laughs> um, but Dalton is the one where uh, he's autistic, so there can be times where he's just not doing good in school. We have had a difficult year. Um, and so just very unpredictable. I can't really leave my house very far during the day because I, I might have to go get him. And that's what happened yesterday. So that's where my lives have been kind of tricky because when I do have time, I'm using that time to work. So um, it's a little tricky to plan lives. Okay. So that is my background all complete. <clears throat> you went to give a thumbs up and lost me. No, come back. All of your girls are adults. Let me go back real quick. Okay, does she look like you or your husband? Um, you know, it depends whose family you ask. If you ask my husband's family, they will say she looks like him. If you ask my family, they will say she looks like me. When she was little, she definitely looked like me. Um, but now I think she's just a really great mix. I think she's just a, a good balance of it all. I'm going to go back over here. I'm appreciated. Thank you. All right. So I'm just going to take, I cleaned off my stamp with my tidy towel. And, you know, there was one thing. Um, I was watching Jennifer's video yesterday, too. I think I put this on the wrong thing. Um, and she made a comment that, you know, I never really thought about before, but it's definitely true is that when I was stamping, you look at Sweet Pea Ink, and that was super pink. Do you want to come say hi now? Here, wait, come here. There, we got that now. There, you can say hi to everybody. Look at, they're all over here. They're just a chatting away. They wanted to see you. They see you in all my Instagram stories. You can bend down, come back, and say hi. Well, because you're too tall. You're too tall. There. See, now they can decide if you look like me. And the dog. 
Okay, now you guys can go. <laughs> okay, back to work. But anyway, uh, yes, so she had made a comment yesterday in the video about staining and how Concord and Ninth, I don't know if it's the ink, if it's the stamp, but look at that. I used Sweet Pea and that was a pretty intense ink. I really don't have a lot of staining on here. I mean, nothing actually. So I thought that was just a really interesting point. Thank you guys. Yes, she, I may be a little biased, but yes, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Been crafting all your life since we were a kid and just discovering YouTube and the crafting community. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's amazing. There is so much out there and, you know, really just trying to find the crafters with your style. But I also think um, finding crafters that's not your style is good too, because they can introduce you to new things. So little of both. So e C9 inks. Well, I'm not going to say none of them stain. I, I won't say that. But most cases, a dark pink, you know, typically reds and dark blues will stain in most cases. Um, I haven't stamped with a dark red or a dark blue yet. I'm going to bet it probably stains, but I was really surprised to see um, my, my sweet pea didn't stain my stamp. Now, I should have probably stamped again on my um, juniper because I did it so lightly. I should have probably went back and stamped it again but I'm cool. So that is my, my color inspiration, creating that background, which I think came out pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. <clears throat> Nelly, your foster grandson has downs. His mother had to come home, had to homeschool him. He refused the Chromebook and couldn't wear the mask during COVID. Oh yes. That mask thing was insane, especially for special needs kids. They don't do that very well. I, I admit. All right. So now moving on, I figured I'd be about an hour. So I have about 15 minutes left. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to add one of these amazing, just say more, uh, sentiments. I really love these. I've been overusing <laughs> <laughs> my big hugs. So let's try. Let's do take care. Let's do a take care. I think would be nice. Your black ink smears. Which black ink? Which black ink is it? Hi, Emma. Yep, I am live. I am, I am. I'll pick up this a little bit. I have a very kind of limited craft space. So I kind of have to clean up as I go. So let me shift some things around here so I can get to my die cut machine. And then I'll do some die cutting. So I'm going to start by die cutting this out of some heavy white cardstock, I think. Kind of moving around. I hope you can still hear me okay. Kind of fun to not be attached to a cord. Background looks fabulous. Thank you so much. So I have the take care and I'm going to die cut this out of some heavyweight white cardstock. And I'm doing that because I'm going to build up the dimension. And I like using my heavyweight cardstock for this because it then I don't have to cut as much to build up that dimension versus maybe an 80 pound. So I'm going to hold that down with my easy C tape and I have my mat. I'm going to be using my Empress to die cut this out. I almost always leave my metal shim in here just in case. And I apologize for the noise. I'm going to run this through my Empress. Sorry, I don't have a die cut cam. <laughs> I'm going to be setting up a separate station upstairs um, in case I need to do any lives when everybody is home because I can't really do lives when everybody's home. Um, in the evenings when you're in when you're working in the kitchen it just doesn't doesn't work as good all right so there is one make sure all those pieces are out i think i'll just die cut two 
think that'll be good enough. Sound is great even when I move around. Great. Oh, that's amazing to hear. I am glad. Hopefully the hopefully the machine isn't too loud for you guys. You're amazed by my multitasking skills, keeping up with all the comments as I craft. <laughs> you know that it's definitely a skill. I am trying to get better at it. It's definitely something. It's just something to do. It's, it's, it is a huge multitasking thing. Okay. Sorry for going on the tangent. Oh, Heidi, I'm sorry. What did I miss? Hard to keep up with comments, I will say. I'll have to go back and, and look through. But, um, hi, Bonnie. Nice to see you. Um, and, and Heidi, whatever, whatever you're going through, this is one of the things I love about lives and crafting community is that, you know, you can pop into a chat and, um, and, and you'll have friends. The mic is screening out. Really? That is impressive. Okay. I'm going to go back here. You love both your Empress regular and mini. Yes. Yes. I do have. I do have both too. Very quiet. It is. Now, I, before I get too caught in the comments here, I need to figure out, um, what do I want to do actually? Um, should we do gold? Should we try some gold? Sorry, I need to move away from my desk and find some gold. Gold cardstock. One second. Let's try some this is some i think it's matte gold from concord and Knight. and when i get to the end i think i'll kind of stop and peek back through comments um so i can see what was going on you do a live you focus on your card making project and you you miss everything You wish you had learned that some of the things, whoops, missed it. Gold would be nice. This gold is a good, it's a go-to. And you know, and actually I probably would have done a black, um, but I die cut my layers from white. And if I was gonna do a black sentiment, I probably should have um, die cut from black cardstock for my layers. So we're gonna go with gold. <clears throat> okay, got that. Got, where'd my other layer go? That one. And it's got a shadow layer, but hmm, I don't think I'm going to do the shadow. I think I'm going to go with it as is. So we can start putting this together. And this, I'll definitely have to attach that to a card base. All that wet ink on there is kind of making it bend a little bit. All right, so now I have my take care. And oops, hopefully I'm not bumping the mic or my hair is not swishing against it. We're, you know, cause I know that can be irritating. I'm gonna grab, this is a, oh, what do they call it? Media mat, a Tim Holtz media mat that just kind of sticks to the surface. And um, I like to do my glooming on it because I don't like cleaning up glue from my, my glass mat. So I just brought out my beauty mat. And now I'm using my Gina K Connect glue, which I don't know, I think it's my house. I always end up clogging it. But once I get that out, it's just dry glue in there. It's not a big deal. It is amazing. And I use this so much. I'm going to just come in and add little dots of glue everywhere. And start to layer that together. Of course, I'm using my tweezers. My poor block here is <laughs> so filthy. 
Shadow would be nice if you could cut out from vellum. Yes, that would be. Maybe I'll try that. We'll see what this looks like. <clears throat> we will see. I also don't want to go too long. I figured probably an hour would be good. And I thought the turnabout would be a good way to start. Pretty easy to do. And now my gold layer. Place that down. Oops, sticky fingers. And then I'll let that sit for a second. So I want that to sit real good. And I don't want to get glue all over the top of the gold. So while that's sitting, let me go back and <clears throat> look at the comments. Just filled your glue bottle, Lori. Forgot to put the lid on. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I honestly don't, I don't put this on often enough. I really should. <clears throat> Brilliant business idea. What did I do? Oh, you guys are just a chat in a way. I'm going to have to go back and check out what you guys are doing. You thought about renting out stamp and die sets. <laughs> okay. together and start a multinational stamp and die library what are you guys doing over there in the chat starting businesses all kinds of stuff all right one thing i want to try since we're in a live and i'm kind of experimenting here i want to i want to try something else let's i got my trusty remote here for my camera i want to see if my zoom works oh there it goes <clears throat> cool okay I'm running this through Ecamm Live with my camera. So, ah, you know, just got to check things out. Now, whenever I clean this off, this is super, super easy to clean off. I take some rubbing alcohol that I have in a spray bottle. And I just clean that off. And all the sticky usually comes off pretty good. Card brainstorming. <laughs> you guys. All right, so that is done, and I'm going to put this away because that's what I do. Otherwise, I'll get dog hair all over it. Okay. Now, I am definitely one. I, I put almost everything away. What my live has provided with you. <laughs> you guys are just you're having a party in there. Zooming away. All right, so that is put away. Clean off my spot a little bit. And I think I'm going to trim this down. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. And I normally do about three and three quarters by five inches. And when I do that, I will usually kind of start with a quarter inch on each side. Now, I do have the new Tim Holtz paper trimmer, which I do love. It's amazing. It's just not easy for me to have it stored close to my desk. So I use it for my thicker projects, um, whether I'm trimming down maybe a card base, things like that. But I do love it. It's just, it's I'm tight for space. Aw, thank you so much. Now functional, let's see. Function of light one. Now what is your real name? <laughs> so I can see that. <laughs> Function of light one. What is your real name? You're good to put away as you go as not to lose products. Yes. I'm just, I'm just really limited on space. I mean, I, I, I have to put away as I go and I can't leave anything out. Um, cause I, I need my desk. I need my desk. So now I'm taking, now this is some more heavyweight, weight cardstock that I'm going to trim. Just a smidge shorter than five. And then this is going to be a smidge shorter than three and three quarters. So I can layer up my background. Does this trimmer cut even every time? I have had very good luck with it. I haven't had any problems. If there's any trimming issues, it's operator error. <laughs> you keep it on the chair next to you on the table. You know, I don't, I don't, I can't even do that. I mean, if you guys could see 
my floor and everything right i mean i have boxes on the floor i have a cart next to me that's constantly wheeled around i really have there is a space in front of me that i like to keep um my paper trimmer and stuff and i had it there but i just kept bumping into everything so i'll bring it out once in a while it just really depends on the project and what i'm doing okay i scored that which i don't even score that right all the time either half of my mistakes are just totally operational error and not anything to do with the product i have that i think i put my nope there's some tape did i miss it did she say her name and i missed it your name is andrea Flo. <laughs> i almost missed the name I'll call you and now and just got to remind me that the name is Andrea. Okay, so I'm going to hold my card base down, keep that closed. I'm going to get this attached. I just refilled most of my Gina K dot runners. So I'm layering this up. This is probably the one that's not full. And then I can build up my dimension, or you can use your foam tape, or you can do both. So this will add a little bit of lift without it being too bulky, which I like. Okay, and now I'll put this on the front of my card, which is why I kept that shut there. So it'll stay closed and I can line up to make sure I have my even white space going around. Place that down. Flo, you know, oh, what was, okay. What was that diner movie, you guys, that had the waitress flow? There were, there were three waitresses, pink diner, uh, pink, pink waitress. Wasn't her name Flo? What was that show? Anybody remember? Anybody remember that show? <laughs> Is the G, G, uh, Gina Dot Runner permanent? So with the Gina, with the Gina Dot Runner, as long as okay, so when you first put it down, um, if you just kind of let it not not push real hard, you have the ability to pick it up and move it around once you really kind of seal it down then yes then it's good to go it's stuck there for good alice thank you was that the name of the show mel's diner there we go yes love that show okay sorry totally distracted there for a second I used to watch that show all the time so this is my I guess i didn't say it because i got distracted um I have my connect glue inside the fine tip bottle. I just love fine tips in general. And all right, oops, I think I bumped my microphone again. I'm gonna try the T square ruler thing. Most times I forget that I have it. So let's pop this in, see if I can line it up. Move my ruler, maybe. All right, we'll try that. All right, and set that down. Let that sit for a second. Come back over here. Cards turning out beautiful. Thank you so much, Sharon. The show was called Alice. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy. Bulls Diner. Hmm. Hi, Vivian. Nice to see you. I'm just scrolling back up to see what I might have missed, other than apparently there's a business plan going on. <laughs> they worked at Mel's Diner. Whoops, where'd that go? I missed this. Where's the sentiment die from? Oh, that it's um another part of the new release from concord and ninth it is the just say more die set so it's literally a die set it's got these cute hearts it's got this bigger one here and then it has sentiments like uh take care hi celebrate you and big hugs 
Yep, all from Concorda 9. Pretty much the main products are from Concorda 9. And I'll I'll go back through and show them again at the end here. Oh, I hit my hour. Because that, it really does actually finish off the card. I'm not going to do too much more to this. I think I'll just leave it clean and simple. I like how that came out. I like the colors. Should I zoom in a little? Let's see if I can play with my zoom. I like the colors on it. We left out the dragon fruit. So we just have the sweet pea, pink lemonade, tide pool, and juniper. And then the products that I used for this is for the swatch. I used the swatch book. This is a combo pack. So it's got the stamp and the coordinating die. And I will uh, try and come back and link the individual products I used. For right now, I just have a general link over to Concord and Ninth for their new release. So that is their swatch book stamp and die set to create the swatches. I used the Just Say More die, which is just a die set with all these great sentiments in here. I used the Mod Turnabout stamp set and the Jig, if you don't already have it. And then for the colors of ink, let me just pull those out so you can take a look at them. One more time here. I should have left them out, but you know, I I have to put things away. <laughs> All right, and then these are the colors of ink. If I zoom back out now. There we go. Whoop, too far. You don't need to see the rest of my crazy desk. <laughs> All right, so that is Pink Lemonade, Sweet Pea, Juniper, and Tide Pool. So what do you think? Did that turn out? Did I come pretty close to what my swatch book was? My swatch, swatch chart here. And the Take Care. I might add embellishments. We'll see. We'll see if I use any embellishments. Thank you so much, Emma. Yes, I do appreciate it. And I will probably post some pictures on my blog too once I take pictures of everything with the swatch as well. Um, only because I, I, I blog almost everything that I do. So that way you have somewhere to go back to to save pictures if you like to save them to Pinterest or just reference back to. I don't always do like a full on um, blog post to describing everything, but I feel at least if you have the pictures, that's something you can go back to versus just having the video, especially with a live, because I'm probably not going to edit my live down. So at least you have somewhere you can reference to. Woo. You could use the coordinating enamel dots. I could if I had them. <laughs> Maybe I'll save the card and wait for the dots to come in. I don't have the enamel dots just yet. So thank you, Lori. Thank you, Barb and Wilma. I appreciate this so much. Maybe double check here, the audience. Yes. The crafting community. Once you get into the live with the chats, it's, it's definitely, it's like a little, little friendly neighborhood. Do you guys have any questions for me while I'm here? You like how I use my tweezers? Oh, Barb, I, you will see me use tweezers in almost every single project. I do not craft without my tweezers. Bonnie, thanks for the live. It was nice. You're from Janesville. You're from Janesville. It's awesome. I'm in Chippewa. I'm over in Chippewa. Up, over. <laughs> I'm up, over in Chippewa. You watch me all the time. Thank you, Barb. It's nice spending time with you guys, too. I really appreciate this. And I'm a little bit over an hour, and I'm going to try a couple things as I end this because. I, I want to try and end, a, I want to have an end screen. Um, we'll see if I hit the right button this time. A couple things I still need to fine tune. Um, and I'm going to have to go back and catch the audio to see how that went. Where are my screens? Let's go back and look. So I appreciate you guys for stopping in. Um, hopefully I can get to doing more. Hopefully I can actually plan a, a little better when it comes to more. The crafters are happy in this neighborhood. <laughs> now, I didn't watch Sesame Street a lot, but it, it's, it, I think of Daniel Tiger, actually, when I think of neighborhoods for some reason, because that's what my son's been listening to. So anyway, I appreciate, appreciate you guys a lot for stopping in. I'm going to have more videos coming up, of course. I'll try and get to my lives more often. Um, 
And yeah, if you enjoyed it, if you want to catch me more, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and the bell notification. So hopefully YouTube notifies you when I do go live or post a new video. Audio is awesome. Wonderful. You got to get back to work. Me too. <laughs> Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Now I'm going to try and uh, try and find my end screen. So don't mind me while I'm babbling here and I'm trying to find a button. That's a countdown. I lost my end screen. Had one. Okay. Thank you guys. I'm going to head out. I'm going to play with some buttons and we'll see what happens. So thank you so much and I will see you guys soon. Bye.